This is part two. Uh, I'm continuing to add on to my email alert uh, system uh, based on a Google form, obviously being part two. If you haven't seen part one, not much of this will make sense. Um, but I am diving right into this. Um, so what I'm going to be adding, we were creating a system where if a form was submitted, uh, an, an email would be sent out depending on what exactly was submitted. This particular application searches for a word. The word I was searching for is Friday. However, you could look for any word in your submission. And then upon the word Friday being submitted into our form, an email was sent out to a picked address um, or whatever address you would like. What I am creating right now is a function. Uh, the function is actually going to be an object. Um, well, it's creating an object. The object that it is creating is, right now I've titled it last submission, and it is going to refer to the data that was submitted. Um, this, my this reference, so if you see this dot name, I'm declaring variables, this is in reference to the actual name of the function, which will be the name of the object. And then the key is dot name, dot name, last row. Uh, so it's grabbing the last row submitted, and then column two is where their name was located. And now I'm moving on to this dot day equals sheet, get range, last row, pretty standard here again. We're getting the last row that was submitted, and zero. Ooh, I missed a parenthesis. Good. And zero, I don't think it's... Oh, obviously it's in column three or column C, so I'm going to make that change. And then the key to get the day value, the day string, is day. And finally, I'm doing this. And again, that refers to the name of the function, which will be the name of the object. So last submission. This dot time equals sheet get range last row and then i am getting the time or uh, that was submitted to the form so someone is making a request for a meeting time possibly um, or whatever this form is and we are creating an object based on the information submitted and then at the end of that i'm returning this and this is the object that has been created again through that function i'm returning the object i'm returning those keys i created here i'm just putting in a, a statement to explain what that function does because i'll forget in four seconds or in the third video and so it's always helpful to have those uh, comments in there also if you're collaborating with people so they can kind of get your motive Ah, and here I changed the name of that function from last submission to get submission. Um, it's more proper, I guess you would say, or uh, it's at least more clear on what the actual function is doing. It is getting the submission, obviously, get submission. Okay, now we need to change up the actual main function. So now that we have this additional information, I would like to output that in the email that we are sending uh, to, to the target that we selected. So I'm changing this up. I'm hitting, I'm right now declaring a variable I'm naming submission. I am then using the get submission function and assigning that as uh, assigning that to submission like I already stated. I threw in an extra equal sign, which hopefully I'll notice before it bugs. Maybe. Um, up and I constantly use logs. It's a good habit just to check each part of your code. If you're unsure of something, um, I haven't used uh, functions to create as many objects as I would have liked. And so I just wanted to make sure our output is what I am hoping for. So here we go, logger.log, and then data submission, pretty standard there. Ah, thankfully I just got rid of that extra equal sign. We're gonna save, ooh, what did I forget? Ah, another parenthesis. 
I'm always leaving off the end there. Maybe I'm used to the auto generation and certain IED, IDEs, IED well. So that looks like it ran. It did. And so we have object, object. So I know there's an object there. Um, and I would like to know if the actual keys are functioning, if the object is empty, if it's the object that I created. So now I'm saving, I'm referencing the key name, and let's go to the log. View logs, and there it is, fake name. So that should be the name of the last submission from the form, and fake name is the name of the last submission. Perfect. So everything is functioning properly there. Now, I'm about to dive into making a uh, an HTML text for our email. I'm making the email a bit more fancy. Uh, in the last video, you've seen that it was very standard. It was just plain text. And so I thought I would make something more interesting. I have this code linked below. Um, this is just my site. I'm going to just copy and paste the HTML code I've already created because this video is about Google App Scripts, not about HTML. Um, it's likely that you've dabbled in it, but if you haven't, regardless, there's the code that I'm using. Um, I'll show it off in a second, but I'm just pasting this into, and again, I made a second file. It helps me organize things. All right. And here I'm going to show you what it actually looks like. I realized that that could be helpful. I'm first going to go to uh, jsfiddle.net. That's just to tidy up the code. It makes it more readable for me. So it's more of just a suggestion. They have that handy title, tidy uh, button up there at the top. And it's nice to have it standard format. I'm now going to copy this again. And I think I head over to LiveWeave, which is a very, very handy tool for on the fly, uh, simple HTML, JavaScript, and CSS editing. Uh, I have an account. You can save it anywhere. It's, it's really excellent. Paste. And that's the gist of it. Obviously, the JavaScript's right in there, so it looks a bit odd, but that is what it looks like. If you want to edit it, I would recommend hopping into something like LiveWeave and edit that some if you don't like how I have it laid out. So. Now we're going to go back here and make sure to send out the new code. So this change I'm making right now is not something you need to do. Um, I was originally intending to do something else, so that's why I'm doing this. I leave it in here for this video, which is unfortunate, but I never even make use of it because we're creating. So I'm grabbing the time variable again, but since we are creating an object, um below the get submission object and that gets the time there there's no reason for me to return the time in the uh original uh check submission function like i am now so i could have left that as return true however i'm complicating this slightly it happens um i debated now going and and fixing this and recording all of this all over again but it's life so what I did here is I returned the time, and now I'm going to make a return false in case that spits out. Um, because now if, if it doesn't return the time, it would need to return false for the main function. So I'm having it do that here. And then I am going to edit down there my if statement. And instead of just checking submission, because now if it's true or if it's there, it will be returning time instead of true. I need to if, and then I'm saying if it does not, if it does not uh, return false, which again, this was unnecessary, but coding, it happens. Oh, uh, and this, this obviously doesn't work. It's the same text as I had last time. 
uh, where is our fancy HTML. I did include as a variable submission in the send alert email. However, I didn't actually change the send alert function or send alert email function, which is problematic. And that I'm going to solve right now. I'm solving that by HTML body text. So that is um, HTML body. And now I'm calling that function HTML email. And I need to put in yes. And I need to put in the parameter there as well. And what did I forget? Oh, I believe I don't need the semicolon. Looks like I'm thinking about this. We'll see if I get it. Ah, yes, I don't need that semicolon in the uh, mail app email app. main and debug. So no errors popped up. I'm going to now go here and check again our emails. And that looks pretty good. Oh, so here I'm debating with time. I decide I don't really like the format of the output of time. So I am going to go ahead and change it. I'm going to change it uh, by using, and I did have to Google this, I just saved it to make it uh, more available for me in the video, to local time string. And that just converts because with the time uh, variable, we get the date and all of that automatically. Um, so that just converts it to only have that time information and to make it in a sensical, readable format. Saving that debugging again, and let's check it out. And there we go. It is just a simple layout of time as opposed to the previous format, which looked like that. Obviously, it wasn't 1899. That's fairly confusing to have in that format. So it's a nice way to just clean up that text. All right, and uh, that's all we're doing in this video. I'm going to continue to work on this. I think I might even add, um, or I'm hoping to add, something where it will automatically place this information into Google Calendars um, for me, which, which would be a nice feature, but I'll continue to tinker with it.